Hey, what's up guys? John here. California is seeing a massive exodus. It's not just California, Chicago as well, New York City. And where are they going? They're going to Texas. They're going to Florida. You know, they're leaving. They're leaving in droves. And it's pretty fascinating to me to really look at the details, look at the data as to why that is. You know, I personally, I lived in California since 2006. I loved California. But ever since... You know, like 2012, it just started getting more and more and more challenging. You know, of course, probably in the 80s and 70s, it was much better. But from my experience, 2012 onward just got more challenging. But especially the last two years, it's unreal. We're seeing all these businesses leave. We're seeing all this opportunity leave. And I actually think that's what they want. And I think that they want that for one very specific reason. LA sheds 1% of the population during the pandemic era. The population of LA has fallen by 1% during the pandemic as some residents left for cheaper homes with more space for remote work. The drop mirrors other big cities' declines in the year that ended in July 1, 2021, Wall Street Journal reported. Collectively, in the nine cities with more than 1 million people, the population fell 1.7%, a loss of 419,000 residents. Only two cities grew, Phoenix and San Antonio. And I, I believe that they're growing because those locations, they probably offered, a lot of people would agree, a better lifestyle. Maybe a little bit more in line with the beliefs of people that were in California, like, you know what? I love California, but I don't love it this much. You know, I'm not going to sacrifice everything for it. I'm going to go to a place that's a little more affordable, a little aligned with my beliefs, no income tax, very business friendly, offer a better lifestyle for my family. I'm going to go there. And I think that actually had a massive, massive contribution to this. And I think it's only just most likely going to be the start of this. I think we're going to see more and more and more people if California uh, continues down the direction that they're going in and Texas stays strong how they're handling things. New York, the nation's largest city, lost 3.5% of its residents, or about 305,000 people. The 1% dip for LA, the second largest city, came to 41,000 people. The population of the third largest city, Chicago, fell by 45,000 people, about 1.6%. Nor was the population drop felt more than San Fran and other Bay Area cities, which generally led the pack in the percentage of residents who left town. Now, I think people left San Francisco for a couple reasons. San Francisco is a beautiful place, at least it was a few years ago. Now, crime is through the roof. They've reduced the penalties for crime to a level to where it almost incentivizes bad behavior. Rents are through the roof, everything is very, very expensive, and it's not a business-friendly climate. Population fell 6.3% during the pandemic, the most of any U.S. city, according to the latest Census Bureau, the Bay City lost nearly 55,000 people as residents bailed out for remote work. Now, what's fascinating here is these protocols and how this all kind of comes together. So right now, they have 740,000, California 740,000 renters in California that are behind on rent. That This is uh, March 22nd, so about, the, about two months ago. Right? 740,000 people are not paying rent because of eviction moratoriums. It's a very friendly location for a tenant. It's a very friendly location for someone that doesn't want to pay rent or, um, you know, kind of contribute to society because they're offering all of these different type of uh, protocols. Like for example, this universal basic income, they're now offering $1,000 a month for high school seniors experiencing homelessness. Now, I'm sure there are high school seniors that are experiencing homelessness. I'm sure it's not uh, rare, but you know, at least to my knowledge, I don't really know anyone that went to high school that didn't have a home, right? Most people that go to high school, they have to use an address. They have to live somewhere. They generally have a mother, a father, a caretaker, someone to help them. I would say 99 times out of 100, right? But when you're giving a, a high school senior $1,000 a month, you're basically, you're giving them uh, incentive to not contribute, to not work, because they're getting money for free, right? And so this is what California is moving in the direction of. Universal basic income, universal this, universal that, you know, gas stipends. They're doing everything that they could possibly do to incentivize people to, you know, just have their hands out. And why would they do such a thing? Well, there are a couple really interesting things that are, they're also doing to business owners that I think are going to incentivize the requirement for more handouts. So right now, they had this protocol. They still do, you know, during this, Additional layers of protection may be needed to halt, right? A business can choose to physically distance, increase telework, remote work, right? Adjust schedules or even halt operations, right? So if you don't follow these specific protocols, then you could 
you could be in trouble as a business owner. And so right now they're offering covered by employees in the public or private sector who work with employers with 26 or more employees, you have to, they're entitled to 80 hours of paid sick leave, right? Paid sick leave entitled for it. And so if let's say hourly wage is 20 bucks an hour, you as a business owner would have to pay 1600 bucks for anyone that says that, you know, that they got this. You look at what this climate has turned into for business owners. It is a, a very, very challenging place. And I believe California is just gonna continue to, to get worse. But I think there's gonna be two different tiers in California. There's gonna be the middle class and the lower income, which is gonna be harder for, you know, for the people that are capitalistic, that are trying to run a small business, that are trying to you know, run a duplex or a fourplex, run a little business, right? It's gonna be more challenging for them. But the elite that are living in Bel Air and Beverly Hills and Santa Monica and the Palisades, these people are gonna be fine because what are they gonna do? They're gonna keep hoarding money and making money because that's what they do. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna use that money to go purchase assets, purchase real assets. And you know, the harder it gets for everybody else, the better it gets for them. And, and that's the unfortunate reality. Nowhere was population drop felt more than San Francisco. San Francisco population fell 6.3% during the pandemic, the most of any U.S. city, according to the latest census data. The Bay City lost 55,000 people. 55,000 people's residents left for remote work. In July, the city had 815,201 people, the lowest since 2020, erasing a decade-long population run, up fueled by the tech and social media sectors. When you look at, they, they say cities, people are leaving cities, the big cities, but you look at Miami, everyone's moving to Miami. Rents are skyrocketing, the demand is there, right? People are leaving cities in which are more challenging, it's more of a challenging business climate. Like for example, Elon Musk, he said that three things are ruining California. The Tesla CEO made that much clear in recent comments during a virtual appearance. California used to be the land of opportunity. Must told the audience. However, it's turned into the land of Texas overregulation and litigation, and this is not a good situation. Now, if you're a landlord in California or a business owner, you're going to go through a lot. You're going to go through a lot because they incentivize lawsuits there. They incentivize uh, problems because the courts make a ton of money, and they have all these different legal counsels and legal networks for for people to sue and for tenants and for uh, employees. They can generally get help for free and the attorneys get a small piece, you know, 30, 40% of the settlement, of the payout. If, they, if it settles before court, they'll get a, a nice percentage. If it settles at court, you know, on the courthouse step, they'll get a percentage, a bigger percentage. And the same thing happens if they end up not settling it and they still are likely to win because it's going to be a California uh, jury, California court system, and you know, they don't favor capitalism for the most part. So it's, it's an uphill battle for business owners. And uh, I think Musk knows this all too well. Musk became increasingly critical of the state as Tesla ramped up its production facilities. He famously built the first so-called gigafactory in the neighborhood of Nevada after winning generous tax concessions from the state. He wanted to build facilities in Shanghai and near Berlin, but when the time came for the U.S. factory, Musk opted for Texas. He boosted that recently opened gigafactory near Austin, a building three times the size of the Pentagon, was completed in just 18 months. If you had this to Newsom's head, and said, we need to start building a factory right now. He couldn't do it, Musk said. There are so many regulatory agencies, so many litigators in California that want to stop you from doing anything that even if you're the governor of the state, you can't get it done, he added. Right. So that that is very well said. That is the state of California. The 15 fastest growing cities in the nation, listen to this, were in the West and South with Arizona, Texas, and Florida, Idaho among the leaders. I mean, that that is the nation communicating what people want, right? That's the nation communicating what people want. They want business climates that are gonna work in favor of the entrepreneur because that's what America is. America is the land of opportunity, at least it was. People want to be able to go out there and work and build. They don't want all the regulation. They don't want the high taxes. They don't want all the problems. They just wanna be able to go out there and put the work in and reap the rewards from it, right? And, and that's what they're doing. When everything hit the fan, that's where they went. Housing construction in Central Texas outpaced LA County with Travis County, which includes Austin, adding 26,000 housing units in the year ending July 1st. That's more than 22,925 in LA County, which is almost eight times as many people. The nation's population grew only 0.01% between July 2020 and 2021, the slowest pace on record as births fell, deaths rose, and international immigration plunged. 
California's population fell slightly for the second year in a row in 2021. You know, that I believe California's population is going to continue to fall. And the reason being is because opportunities are going to start leaving California more and more and more as they continue going down this road. And this road is one that's going to uh, take away incentives for small businesses to, you know, to take a shot, to try to start a business, to try to start an enterprise and bring jobs. They're going to continue making it harder and harder. And these people are just going to be forced to leave and they're going to bring their money and bring their enterprise to other states like Florida and to Texas and to other locations. What do you think about this entire situation? Where do you see California going? And do you think that the really rich actually really want this to happen so that they can use their money and go out there and purchase all the distressed property, all the distressed assets in California? Drop your comments below, hit the like button, subscribe. You're also subscribe to my second channel. It's going to be a podcast and interactive show this week. LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, everything's in the banner. I'll catch you guys later.